I'm going to go through a couple of the points you've already heard about already, but I think it is really important that we understand that as a nation, we all need to be losing some weight. 64% of us are overweight or, over or obese in the UK. That means that within the UK, there are 40 million of us that are obese or overweight. It costs the NHS five billion pounds per year trying to deal with obesity and overweight. And these are recent statistics. And we wonder what about the, uh, the five a day challenge. It's been over 25 years that the whole adage of five a day has been important for us all. But still less than 25% of adults are consuming five a day and less than 10% of children. And in the time between Caroline and myself actually completing our reports and getting them written up by the end of February, and the conference today, the goalposts have changed. Is it seven? Well, if it is seven, seven then it's even less than, it, than um, <laughs> that we're achieving this. Is it ten? So the, the work that the University College of London which has been very topical recently, has raised the profile of five a, five a day again. Some people are talking 10 a day. The challenges are great for us all. So, what is the tipping point? Susan talked about habit change, the challenge of changing people's habits. And the sad reality is that People don't really change until their personal circumstances are directly affected. So, or someone very close to them is adversely affected. So they go into a GP and they're diagnosed with a condition, whether it be heart disease, whether it be diabetes, whatever it may be. The problem is that we only change as a result of trying to cure something. The opportunity we have as an industry is prevention. And let's not forget the statistics. 64%, five billion cost. The humble potato. How important is that in our diet to you as farmers within the UK? So many of us produce potatoes, so many of us consume potatoes. And as a little bit of an example, some nice yummy strawberries. And it's, it's just a slightly grubby potato, isn't it? You know, it's always maligned in, in the vegetable world. However, from the outside, it's a slightly grubby potato. On the inside, significantly more interesting. Who would have thought that plant breeders in Holland could come up with a potato variety that had four times the level of antioxidants of the well-loved strawberry? So as part of my study, I went to a company called HZPC in Holland, who are potato breeders. But they're very much focused on the customer. And they're focusing on nutritional value. And within their breeding program, they have a pillar related to nutritional value. And under that pillar, they are breeding for three different types of high nutrition potato. One, is a low carbohydrate potato. Second is the high antioxidant potato. It doesn't take many women in the room to figure out which one that they are. And the third is a high beta, it's a high carotene potato. So a potato that historically has just been, well it's just a potato, people boil it and you know if you're really lucky you might get a roast one. 
couldn't miss the opportunity to talk about health and nutrition without mentioning blueberries, a phenomenal success story within the UK. And remember, when, when we've been selling blueberries, we've never actually seen a health claim on a pack of blueberries. But everyone is nodding in the room going, we all think blueberries are very healthy. The left-hand graph is the sales value of blueberries in the UK in 2003. A 17-fold increase in sales in 10 years. 17-fold. Is there really no value in nutrition that's improving it from food? The right-hand graph. That's the percentage of people within the UK that are consuming blueberries. Ten years ago it was six percent, now it's thirty-four percent. If you go to a crop like strawberries, you're about eighty-five percent market penetration. There is still huge headroom for growing for growth of blueberries. These are very recent statistics, and I was at a conference over in Holland two weeks ago. Within Europe, we only consume per person 70 grams of blueberries per year. In the USA, it's nearly 1.1 kilos in the various different forms. So the US and Canada consumes 79% of all of the world blueberry production. And so blueberries have got this health halo, 